Hello everyone, Rock AP here, and today we're back with episode 3 of our series where we're taking a look at good news from around the world in the last week. It's Good News Weekly Roundup time! We're starting with the first story from New Zealand where they've announced they're COVID free, no more active patients with COVID over there. So they've eased off all restrictions completely, everything can go back to normal. It's pretty good, as a victory against this pandemic, in my eyes, let's just hope the rest of the world recovers as quickly. That'd be pretty nice. Staying with New Zealand, they've also announced sanitary products for women are going to be free in schools. This is to help what they're calling period poverty. An estimated 95,000 girls and teenagers have been staying at home not able to afford sanitary products during this whole crisis. So this is the government's way to support the young people to continue their learning in school. And really it's only costing New Zealand 2.6 million New Zealand dollars? I'm not sure what they use over there. But it is a fantastic initiative. Third story on my list, I thought it was a lovely little story. A 10 year old girl who has a charity called Chelsea's Charity, has sent families over across America colouring pens for the children. She's helped over 1,500 families with colouring pens and pencils and other art related stuff to keep them busy during the pandemic. And again, that's pretty awesome. What a lovely little gesture to do. Look out for those families. I know my nieces all love art. So they would have benefited this greatly. The next story comes from racial riots. Everywhere we have seen a lot of police brutality. We've seen a lot of violence from protesters. But there's also been lots of peaceful protests. And around the world, they're actually knocking down statues of racists, basically. In America, in the southern states, they're knocking down statues of Confederate heroes. The Confederate were the people who wanted to keep slaves, which started off civil war. In England, I saw a statue of a slave trader. For some reason, I didn't even know it was up. It was knocked down in Bristol and chucked into the sea. In Belgium, if you want another example, King Leopold, who was a tyrant of a king in the late 1800s to, I think about 1904. I want to say he basically took over a country in the Congo when white people were discovering all these places and all their natural resources and just taking them over for themselves. And the amount of brutality he caused on Congolese people, I think that's it, Congolese, is unimaginable. There's a famous photo out there of a man who's staring at a tiny hand a tiny foot they were his daughters basically he didn't fulfill his quota of rubber because they were like rubber mining or however you get rubber i think it's from trees i don't know and because he didn't fulfill his quota they cut off the hands and feet of his young daughter of his wife and they killed them obviously and then they cannibalized them. And all he got was the foot and the hand of his daughter. And if that doesn't tell you how evil King Leopold is, then something wrong with you. But in Belgium, there were statues of him everywhere for some reason. And they've been knocked down too. Taking off all the statues, they're cutting off their hands and their heads as symbols. But they're just destroying the statues. So. Good on the world, I say. In Singapore, they've been combating COVID-19 with four day working weeks and they're deciding they're going to try and keep it. So they're trialing to see if it will work out in normal time. And it just means everyone in Singapore get an extra day to do what they want. That's pretty awesome. Getting more free time with your family, doing your hobbies. Making YouTube videos? It's pretty cool. 
So, big props to Singapore. Victory for Singapore! In Kenya, a nine-year-old boy has been recognised by the president of Kenya for his hand-washing invention, which he's designed to help the fight against COVID-19. He's been given the Uzalendo Award alongside 67 other recipients, each in their fight against the pandemic in Kenya. So that's fantastic. His hand washing machine is designed to wash your hands without actually needing to touch it, therefore eliminating that chance of spreading the disease. Political leaders in his region have said they hope to nurture this young lad. All over the world, rich people are pledging money in the fight against racism, basically. People are either given to the families of people who've suffered racism, including George Floyd's family. People are giving to groups who are against racism. And a few examples I'll give you. Kanye West donated $2 million. Pretty good. Apple, Facebook and Verizon, major companies, all donated $10 million. Bank of America, they've pledged $1 billion in the fight against racial hate. So, that's pretty good. Here in the UK, 80% of all hate crime committed is racial hate crime. So, we've got a long way to go before we're in a predicament where things can get better. But, with this kind of money thrown around, Someone's going to listen. Before the racial riots, before Corona, before the Australian bushfires, which destroyed love, land. There was the Hong Kong protests, which are still going on today. Because they want to be free. They don't want to live under the tyrant rule of the Chinese leadership. You want to stop them from being able to be themselves by giving them all these rules and trade laws. And because of that, Boris Johnson of the UK have said to over 3 million inhabitants of Hong Kong are welcome to come over on passports and live here. That's pretty cool. They bring extra money into our economy. They'll bring all their talents, all their technology. Sometimes I wish we could live in a world where you could just like a, like, like a word program where you could just copy and paste. Sometimes I wish we could just, like, well, cut and paste, really. Cut Hong Kong so that you saved it. And then paste it in a different place far away from China so they won't want to claim it. And you could just, like, plump, middle of England. And call it New Hong Kong. That'd be pretty cool. It's pretty special and pretty huge news for the UK and Hong Kong. Because we want to save them. I'm going to save those people. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode today. Thank you for watching and hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Please subscribe. Feel free to comment. Feel free to hit like. And stay tuned on the weekend on Sunday. There'll be a live stream where you can join in on playing games. All you need is your phone and a screen to watch. And you can play Jackbox Party games with us. It's quizzes and stuff. Thank you for watching. Bye!